Well, hello there, everybody. I am the Almighty Zentaco, and today is going to be a super simple short one. But for this, we're going to use Inkscape. So if you don't have Inkscape, why don't you go on over to Inkscape.org and download it. So I'm going to open up Inkscape right now. Okay, so what we're doing here, it's real simple. Um, we are learning how to change our icon that shows up in the top left part of the screen for your game whenever you're running your application on the bar. And also it's the icon that you will see for your application itself. Some people don't know how to do this. It's really simple. So all you gotta do to change your application icon is click on your app and under properties, go to the about tab. You'll see an icon here. Click the icon and select edit. Now, as you see, there's a bunch of different icons from 256 by 256 all the way down to 16 by 16. Uh, and they have different color amounts too, like this is 256 colors, and then this one is only 16 colors. So I guess that's if you're running some compatibility mode or just a really crappy computer running Windows, like, I don't even know, Windows 3.1 or something. Um, but all we gotta do is make an icon and then we will import it using the import feature. So I'm gonna make an icon with Inkscape real quick and we will go ahead and do that. So open up Inkscape. We're gonna make a square. Um, I'm holding Control and Shift to make sure this square is centered and perfectly square. <clears throat> Press F2 once you got the square there and grab the little corner. We're gonna round it off just a tad, just to make it look a little nicer. Uh, I think I'll change this to white with a black background. Anyway, this is just an example, so it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna make a slime for our icon because I do like slimes. So I'm gonna make this slime oval, change it to green pressing Control, Shift, and C to uh, make it so that the nodes can be moved. I'm going to press Control D to duplicate it. Control D again. I'm going to set it off a bit, select them both, go to Path, and I'm going to go to Difference. This is going to cut out a little chunk. Okay, we're going to turn this black and holding Shift, click the X here on the color. That'll get rid of the stroke. And we're going to put this down in the corner. This is just a shadow. And I'm going to uh, go over to the Opacity tab and lower that so that it just makes it look like a darker shade of green. I'm going to select everything and press Control G to group it. And now I'm just going to give this guy some uh, highlights and some eyes. So for the highlights, we're just going to make an oval shape. Press F1 to select it and drag it over. I'm going to resize that. Kind of move it around a bit. And I'm going to make it white. And I'm going to duplicate this with Control D again, resize that, stick it over here like so, group it all. Now I'm going to give them some eyeballs, selecting the circle tool, holding Shift and Control to make a perfect circle. It is there, we can't see it though because it's white on white, so we're going to select the color black. Make sure the opacity is all the way up. Uh, holding Shift and select black, we want a black outline. And then uh, we want the inside to be white, so we're just going to click without pressing Shift. That'll change the fill. If you hold in uh, Shift, it changes the stroke. Let's see. Okay, so that's going to be our eyeball. Oops, I made an extra eye. Um, okay, so we got this eye here. We're going to we're going to go ahead and resize this, holding Shift and Control. Boom. And uh, I'm going to make a pupil. Let's make that pupil black. Control D to duplicate, shrink it down, drag it to the corner of the eye, select both, go to path difference, we're cutting out a highlight out of it essentially, and that's going to be his pupil. Select the whole thing, Control G to, to group it, can, uh, Control D to duplicate it, and I'm going to press H to make it horizontal. nah, we're going to leave it like that. Forget, forget the H. H will flip it horizontally, V will flip it vertically, but it's the, we want the highlight to be kind of in the same place. I'm going to group this together, select the eyes and the slime, go to align and distribute, and we're going to center this. Oh, it was a bit offset. Then I'm going to give him a little smiley face, so I'm going to use the oval tool. Press Control, Shift, and C to give this adjustable nodes. Press F2 to allow us to control these nodes, and I'm going to bring down the top part and lower the bottom to kind of give him a smile. Then I'm going to resize it. Okay, 
So he's got a smiley face. And um, I'm going to press Control D to duplicate this and then select red to make it red. I'm going to shift it on down, drag it down, and press F2 to control the nodes. We're going to make this a little rounder at the top. And I'm going to squish it down a bit. And that's going to be his tongue. Tongue, not tongue. All right, so that's our icon guy. Control D to uh, group it all up. Gonna center it. We're gonna make this blue. So I'm selecting the backdrop and I'm going to select a shade of blue. Select them both, align distribute, and center both horizontally and vertically. Increase the size of this guy a bit. Group it all. Okay, so that's our icon. It's not the best icon in the world, but that is our icon. So now let's go back over to Fusion and see what we need to do again. Select Edit on our icon, and we see that we need a bunch of different sizes. So we're just going to export this single icon all these different times. We're going to export one for 256 by 256, 128, etc., etc. So to do that, go to uh, go to Inkscape, select the icon, go to Export PNG Image, and you can change the size up here. So 256 and then it'll it'll match it. So there's 256 by 256 and then we can do export as and uh, we'll export it as something. I'm gonna stick it on the desktop. I'm gonna call it 256 X 256. Pressing enter and then selecting export. So it has now exported that. And then I'm gonna select it again and change it to 128. And I'm gonna export it as 128 by 128. Again on the desktop. And I'm going to export it. And you just do that for every size you need. Uh, we need a 48, a 32, etc. Okay, so now that we have the majority of these um, exported, you're going to want to actually do one for every size just to make sure you cover all your bases, but I didn't do that because I don't need to um, because this is just an example. All right, so what you do to import these, select the size you want to import. So we're going to start with 256 by 256. Click on the import icon, which is an opening folder. Oops, that's a different thing. We're going to the desktop, so I'm going to tab all the way up and I'm just going to grab these icons. So here's my 256. Boom. So that one's in there. And then I'm going to import my 128. Boom. And then I'm going to import my 48. And I'm going to import my 32. And for these ones with the different colors, it'll automatically adjust the color. So you can just re-import the size requirement. So for example, the 48 by 48, I will just import the 48 by 48. And I will not worry about the color. It will adjust it itself. 32 by 32, doing that again, so on and so forth, down to 16 by 16. Just make sure you get uh, one icon for every single one of these. You don't want to leave anything out. Okay, so we got all of our icons here. So we will press OK to finalize. And if we run the application, we will see that the top left icon has been changed. If we were to build this application, we would have a, an application for the app, uh, or sorry, an icon for the application. It will have been changed. You can also go ahead and uh, do some other stuff here in the info. You can put like a help file or your author name and copyright and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so that's it, guys. It's actually really simple. That is how you make, or rather, that is how you change the icon for your applications in Click Team Fusion 2.5. I hope you found this useful. And if you have any questions or comments, as always, feel free to leave them down below and I'll do my best to get back to you or hop into my Discord channel and uh, I'll try to help you guys out there. Thanks a lot, guys. I will see you in the next video. Peace out.